In this second video, we're going to dive into the practical part of Frida. So first the installation. Frida consists of a client and a server. The client needs to be installed on your own host machine or a virtual machine. To do this, you only need Python. So we can install this with pip3 install Frida tools and also objection, which is a useful add-on to Frida. So let's do this on a virtual machine. So pip3 install Frida tools, then Frida minus minus version will show I have Frida version 16.2.1 installed. In the background you see I already have the GitHub repository open, but this is for the Frida server. For the client we are done, but now we can continue with the server. So the Frida server you can download from GitHub and the version should match the Frida client we just installed and the architecture should match your Android device. Next we can push this Frida server to the Android device. So let's also do this. So make sure you have an Android device listing and in this case, I'm connected over VPN and also via ADB, you should have one device connected. Then we can move on to the Frida server installation. So on GitHub, you can find the Frida server for your specific Android version. So in my case, it's this one, Android ARM64. So I already extracted this one. And now we can run the comments as explained on the slide. So let's start with the first tree. So this might take a while, but you can see I renamed this executable and it's now uploading to the device. So the upload is finished and we also changed the file permissions. The last step is to run it, but I would advise you to run ADB as root, else you might also run into an error. But now the Frida server is running on the device. So let's start with Frida PS minus minus help might also be useful. This one is quite simple, not a lot of options, but one important option is minus U, which is USB. And even if you're using a virtual device, usually if you only have one device connected via ADB it is recognized as a USB device so PS minus U will already give you all the processes and applications running on this device. To make this list a little bit smaller we can also add A which stands for applications and then you can see there is only one active application running on this device which is the phone and if we append an I then you get all the installed applications. So this device is quite empty it has no third party applications but we are going to use this WebView shell application. As you can see, the only the phone is active, the other installed applications are not running. So what we can do on the device is we can open this application. So this is the WebView browser tester, which should match the WebView shell. So if we run Frida PSA again, then we can see this WebView application now is also running. The second executable Frida I want to demonstrate now, we can again use the minus U flag to connect to our device. And then we have different options. You can specify the name of the application. So in this case, WebView shell you want to attach to. So this should work. So now we are attaching to this existing application, but you can also do this differently. You can also do minus F and then it will spawn a new instance of this application. So this is also possible. And as you can see, spawning this application, which means if we use Frida PS, then there is a new process ID of this application. So those are two different options. And there is also a third option. And the third option is minus P and then we can use the process ID. And I prefer this option because yeah, it's the maybe the shortest one as well. Now we are attaching to this process. And to give you a little bit more information, now we are inside this Frida executable and we can call all the APIs of Frida. So for example, if I type Java, then it's using the Java API of Frida. I think Android version, it also auto-completes, is a simple command you can do. So then it displays 13 is the current Android version. Instead of a single command, you can also paste a complete script into this. But there's also another way by, by saving the script to a file, which is more common. So for now, I will continue with Frida Trace, which is the last executable. So Frida Trace minus U again. Then we can use minus P2893. And then Frida Trace also have a specific syntax. But to give you one example, minus I is to search or attach to functions and then you can specify for example all functions starting with open and with Frida Trace what it does it searches for functions in different libraries and then it creates also some JavaScript snippets so it found seven functions to trace in this case and those handler files you can then find in the current directly then handlers then in this case libc.so 
apparently and then for example it creates on enter on leave those kind of functions using the javascript api of frida so this is just for your information and now we enabled frida trace we have this browser open so maybe if we just use this browser we go to google.com Apparently this trace and open already gave a lot of results. So apparently this browser is also opening a lot of files regarding cookies, cache, or something like this. This was just a random example about how Frida Trace is working. So with Ctrl C, we can end it again. And then the last thing I want to show you is a more useful script. We went over those three executables of Frida. And the one thing I didn't show you yet is how to use Frida, the command line interface, with the JavaScript API by creating an own script. So let's also do this. So one thing we can do, we can create our own script. I already prepared this script regarding to this web browser. And then we can use the JavaScript API of Frida to overload a function. And in this case, the function load URL, which I think makes sense if you look into the name, loads the URL for the browser. And what we are going to do, we are going to replace everything what the user is typing and replace it with mobilehackinglab.com. So how did we find this information? In this case, there is a default Android component called WebKit used and then WebView and WebView has a method load URL. So in in this case, we can get the definition of this function on the documentation of Android. So this is the load URL function. So it gets the URL as a string input. So that's the parameter we're going to tamper with. And the information to create this script, we can look into the documentation of Frida. In this case, specifically the JavaScript API. But in this JavaScript API, we want to overload a Java method. So the instrumentation part Java. So in our case, we are using this use function, for example. So let's go back on the VM. As you can see, I already prepared a script similar to the script on the slide. So first it prints the current URL, which is loaded in the browser. And then we define a new URL and then we overload this new URL. So let's see how we can use this script. Minus U minus P2893 we want to attach again. Minus L to load the script. And our script is called loadurl.js. So now you don't see anything yet. But let's see if we do something on a device. So here we have google.com and let's go to example.com. And then suddenly mobilehackinglab.com is loaded. So it seems that our script is working. So this was the introduction of the three Frida executables. And mainly the last part about the Frida command line interface. We're going to dive deeper into the next video. There's also something called Frida code share, which we will explain there. So hope to see you in the next video.